What's up guys? You're in my kitchen. Now today is Friday or Thursday. It's, it's supposed to be our day off, our cold weather day. But anyway, it's like 20 degrees outside and it's pretty gross and miserable. Uh, and I also don't want you to be polluting anything. So th this we're going to do a pot roast and it's going to be a nice warm family meal for you and your family and you're not out polluting anything in 20 degree weather. So uh, I'll, I'll, let me show you this and then I'll explain what this has to do with environmental science. So first thing for the pot roast, we're going to start off with some beef. Very roughly chopped red onion, and yellow onion, boom. Very coarsely chopped carrot. And if we got room for it, we're going to throw in some small red potatoes. Now, we're going to fill all that with water. And we're going to turn it on. Now, I'm going to set this for eight hours. So really what we're, we've got here is a bunch of materials in water, and we're going to expose it to a relatively small amount of heat for a long period of time. So what does that have to do with environmental science? What it has to do with is thermal pollution. Thermal pollution is, there can be, take lots of different forms, but typically what happens in a thermal pollution case is where mankind has taken water out of a living wild ecosystem, used it for some sort of industrial purpose or uh, a cooling purpose or maybe a power generation purpose and cooling uh, a power plant or something like that, and then they put it back into the wild ecosystem where it came from, but at a higher temperature than what it should be, what is normal for that period of, of time, okay? And so just like my, my crock pot here, I'm going to have materials in water, and it's not going to get more than about 150 degrees, but it, which is, in the grand scheme of things, not that hot. But over a period of time, you're going to see a chemical change, a structural and physical change, in these carrots and potatoes and onions and beef and things like that. The water's still water, the beef is still beef, the potatoes are potatoes, but they're going to change as I expose them to this relatively small amount of heat for a long period of time. Now, I've got this one set for eight hours, okay? Now, in thermal pollution cases, when you expose this living ecosystem to this uh, hot water, when I've heated the ecosystem unnaturally for a long period of time, then changes start to happen, kind of like in our, our little soup here, or roast here anyway, that, um, uh, for instance, uh, the rate of decomposition, it's much faster, sometimes too fast, and then it can lead to eutrophication. Sometimes the rate of gas exchange is way too fast, or it's faster, but it can be too fast to the point where the water won't hold oxygen well enough, and the O2 levels are chronically low, or maybe in the wintertime when O2 levels are supposed to recharge with this very, very cold water that holds oxygen and wave action from all the wind blowing, which is the time period that we are in now, then maybe the body of water is not able to recover its oxygen levels because of the thermal pollution. Sometimes thermal pollution can alter the ecosystem to where it favors um, invasive exotic species like our northern snakehead. Sometimes, like up in Canada and Alaska, when there are trout and salmon and things like that, that are supposed to have very, very cold water, lay their eggs in very cold water, then sometimes that thermal pollution can mess up their, their egg laying, their breeding, hormones, that sort of thing, even the timing of migrations, and it can favor things that are not invasive exotics, but are native, but can become invasive, okay? So, such as the northern pike, for instance. The northern pike favor likes cold water too, but not quite the same as Alaskan salmon. And with the water warms up, then some of these fish that are not supposed to be there start to be there, even though they're native to that area, okay? They're not supposed to be in that water. This can also happen in both aquatic freshwater and marine ecosystems and brackish or estuary systems. When the water gets too hot, then things start to get messed up and in a chain reaction of events. You change the water chemistry, you change the rate of decomposition, you change the species that are there, Eventually, over time, we end up with a completely altered ecosystem because of that thermal pollution. All right, so here's your assignment. I think that it is vitally important 
that young people give back to their families that gave to them. So what you're going to do is make this pot roast and serve your family. Take a picture of your meal that you made or maybe your family enjoying that meal. That is just something I think is really important. Also, you're going to include with your, your picture that you turn in a link to a case study. A case study is uh, an article that you're going to find or a, maybe a legal case or something like that about thermal pollution. It can be something like turbidity causing thermal pollution with the Alaskan salmon, or it can be a case study of thermal pollution um, coming out of like a power plant or something like that and how that has modified an ecosystem. It can be anywhere in the world, preferably from here in the United States, but it can be anywhere in the world. So what you're going to turn into me, you're going to make the dish, take a picture of your dish and your family, and then a case study that you researched on your own about thermal pollution.